Um, well, good morning from uh, London. Um, good afternoon um, from Japan. Uh, we are delighted to um, present to you today a session talking about Fukuoka. Uh, Financial Centre of the World uh, is a series we've been running for some time now. Um, and we try to look at emerging financial centres as well, those uh, who are very much more established. Um, I'm delighted to have with us today Alison Birch, Managing Director of State Street Trust and Banking Co Limited, um, Kiyoya Okazawa, um, Oka to his friends, the Chief Executive Officer at uh, Stock Corporation. Um, and we will be hearing from them today um, and looking forward to that very much. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mike Wardle. Uh, I'm the Chief Executive here at CN. Uh, it's my absolute pleasure to chair the session today. That means my job is really to get out of the way very quickly so we can hear about um, some of the content we have this morning. Um, but some bits of housekeeping I need to do before we get started. First of all, um, just to say thank you to our sponsors here at FS Club. We have a, um, a very generous uh, range of sponsors who allow us to run these webinar series and to um, go far and wide across the topics of um, science, economics, technology, innovation, um, and of course, financial centres. Um, in terms of the programme today, um, as I say, my job is to get out of the way, out of the way very quickly. We'll have a short video uh, in a moment uh, just to introduce um, the subject of Fukuoka City, uh, a keynote presentation from Oka, um, and then a panel discussion between uh, um, Oka, Alice and myself uh, before we have time for Q&A. Um, there is a, a button on your screens uh, where you can um, open the question panel, uh, type your questions in. Um, we'll be taking questions only in English today, um, so you may need Google Translate if you're um, here from Japan and you want to put a question in, um, but please do uh, put questions in at any point during the webinar and we'll get to as many as we can uh, at the end of the session. Um, so that's all, all I think, but the only other thing to say, just the session is being recorded. Um, that means that afterwards, if you um, haven't caught all the content you needed to, or you think you'll have a friend who might be interested um, or a colleague, then there'll be the opportunity to share the recording with them, and that'll be up live on our website in a couple of days' time. Um, so that is all I have to do by way of introductions, other than to just welcome um, Alison and Oka. Uh, we'll be hearing from both of them during the course of the session. Um, but before we do, and before we go into that content, uh, we'd like to play you a short video uh, from the governor of Fukuoka City. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Soichiro Takashima, Mayor of Fukuoka City. Thank you very much for joining this webinar today. Fukuoka City is known as the most dynamic and uh, fastest growing city in Japan. Why are people and companies moving to Fukuoka over Tokyo or Osaka? This webinar will answer this question. In recent years, quality of life matters more than economic size when we choose business location. I hope you will discover the hidden potential of Fukuoka as a global financial center. I'm honored to introduce you two great speakers actively playing a part on the front line of the global financial industry. Mr. Kyoya Okazawa Global Financial Business Attraction Ambassador, Fukuoka City. And uh, Ms. Alison Botch, Head of Fukuoka Office, State Street Trust and Banking. The bank has offices in Fukuoka. They will share their experiences and uh, the attraction of Fukuoka. Please enjoy the webinar. I hope each of you will also share the charm of Fukuoka with the world. Thank you. That's a lovely introduction. Um, and so, Oka, over to you for your presentation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Kind introduction, Mike. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm a Global Financial Center Fukuoka City Ambassador, uh, Kyoya Okazawa today. Um, so, um, so we are basically aiming um, aiming to be Asia focused uh, financial center. That's the title of today's presentation. Let me uh, briefly touch on my uh, background before going to the main you know main main presentations. I spent twenty eight years with investment banking, uh, namely UBS and BNP, uh, before coming back to Japan uh, twenty twenty one, 
I spent seven years in Hong Kong uh, to manage entire APAC business, including Australia, India, and, and, and Japan and Korea. Um, I traveled across many uh, financial cities in APAC. Um, by doing that, I fully, fully aware uh, history and attraction and development each major uh, financial centers and cities across the APAC. Um, when I came back to Japan, and I realized the great potential of a city to be um, Asia-centric, uh, Asia-focused uh, global financial city uh, in, in Japan. That's going to be a key differentiation between uh, Tokyo, Osaka, and Fukuoka City. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so basically, Fukuoka City is based in Kyushu region. Uh, Kyushu region consists of seven uh, prefectures. Um, de facto, uh, Fukuoka City is de facto capital city of the Kyushu. Uh, Kyushu as a region is a quite significant uh, size of the economy. Uh, 443 billion uh, US dollar worth GDP, which is around 10% of Japan GDP. Uh, Population-wise, is roughly speaking 10.2% of Japan population, 12.8 million people. Um, surprisingly, uh, Japan is known as a negative uh, demographic uh, picture as a nation. But Fukuoka City is a complete opposite. It's very, very strong uh, young population growth. Uh, student ratio is around 7%. It's a very young and almost youngest city in Japan and population is growing. And fastest growing national uh, strategic special zone. So since year 2014, Fukuoka is named as special um, national, national um, strategic zone to grow more startups. At the same time, it creates more um, in high level employment as a Fukuoka city. Um, if I compare the size of the economy, uh, 443 billion, around 28th or 30th of global GDP, which is quite a comparable uh, to a GDP of Norway, uh, GDP of Australia. Given the de facto status of Fukuoka City as a capital city of the Kyushu, if we properly mapped, probably uh, Fukuoka City should be mapped properly uh, somewhere in a global uh, financial city index survey going forward. I'd like to touch on why Fukuoka City is worth being properly mapped uh, as global financial city going forward. Next slide, please. So I just uh, try to uh, make all uh, uh, analysis uh, is a competitive analysis and comparison uh, with uh, global financial city index and matrix. Uh, look at the business environment. Since Mayor Takashima uh, took a role, it's a very stable political leadership last 12 years. We are signed as national strategic special zone, startup focus and foster global startup and job creations. And then city is very proactive to deregulate many uh, policy making process, including working visa since uh, year 2023, this year, this November. Point number two, human capital. As I said, very positive uh, demography, young population growth is number one among major cities in Japan. 110K students and 6.8% total populations. And surprisingly, but quite uniquely, 7,000 annual science students from Fukuoka City. Very open to international talent, very strong academia, Kyushu University to start with, Asena University, Fukuoka University. There are so many uh, very, very strong uh, you know, academia stay and base in Fukuoka City. City infrastructure, um, Fukuoka City is is, is, is recognized as a very strong a policy deregulation leadership in Japan. The, in fact, uh, they deregulated a building code. As a result, now 130 new office buildings it will be completed by the end of 2030. And Fukuoka Airport is the second largest number of passengers in Japan. Fukuoka City has 17 uh, direct international flights. The 14 is going to Asia major finance city directly. So Fukuoka city is directly connected with key major city in ETA. Financial sector development. 
So Global Financial Center project kicked off since 2021 to enhance direct financing, namely fund capacity, to work with uh, regional banks to provide very attractive money circulation to grow Fukuoka city economy and Kyushu economy. As a result, we could attract Hong Kong-based largest fund on fund asset manager, MCP asset management, cap reach from Singapore, and we are going to have Hong Kong-based security company and Taiwanese banks is open branch in Fukuoka city. At the same time, we are really reforming Fukuoka Stock Exchange to improve the market liquidity across all Kyushu and major Kyushu cities. And we expect more funds to set up, invest into agriculture, climate tech, food tech space. So it's very diversified um, economic background in the Kyushu. And going forward, Fukuoka cities provide more liquidity to the market. And the reason why I stick in this, this point is very important, but at the same time, Fukuoka City is really serving the group, the Kyushu uh, entire economy as a financial city centers. Um, reputations, as Mayor of Fukuoka City mentions, quality of life is not comparable, very, very strong among major cities in Japan, 95% of Kyushu Fukuoka citizens is very much satisfied with quality of life in a Fukuoka city. Highest clean energy supply by Kyushu electricity is now ratio of high, you know, ratio of the clean energy supply is around 58% versus 30% as average, Japan average. When we look at decarbonization scope one to three, Fukuoka City and Kyushu is most competitive place to run operation, run the business across all Japan at this moment from sustainability perspective. Cultural connectivity with Asia, as I said, Fukuoka is directly connected with, with many of uh, Asian countries, lots of cultural exchange, and we created the, the Japan Hong Kong Association since 1981. Next slide, please. Look at this simple uh, map. Geographically, Fukuoka is really gateway to Asia. Only 50 minutes to Korea, 100 minutes to Shanghai, 240 minutes to Hong Kong. Look at chart number two. On this slide, China is the largest trading partner still and growing. More than 50% of trading inbound outbounds with key Asia countries. By design, Fukuoka city economy is deeply and closely connected with Asia regions. This is why to differentiate Tokyo, Osaka, Financial City Center project, we want to be very Asia centric. We try to be very Asia focused, global financial city. That's our aim. That's our missions to build more capacity in Fukuoka City. And number of foreign students has continued to grow, a very strong growth as well. And Fukuoka City continue to welcome more students from overseas to create more diversified operation in Afkoka City. And also we are looking for more startup coordination with Asian countries. Startup in Fukuoka City go to APAC. We welcome more startup in APAC to come to Fukuoka City to build new employment and new industry going forward. Next slide please. So this is a kind of snapshot. We try to be very forward, very much forward looking and sustainable financial center. Clean energy supply set. It's very strong competitive advantage when it comes to scope one to three. We also put strong focus, the education to the next generations. 
we open up cram school from Hong Kong to educate K-12 kids from STEM educations to cope with global megatrend, namely AI, namely more technology transformations. Really strong startup focus. We are leading city of startup since year 2014, before people talking about startup importance and importance of to grow new industry in Japan. And Alison can mention about State Street, but we already have very strong financial institutions in Fukuoka City, Fukuoka City Bank, Nishinipo City Bank, two strongest regional banks in Japan. We have MCP, Asian Asset Managers, and Taiwanese banks, and Hong Kong-based securities companies coming to the Fukuoka City, US banks, and we have a strong Japan and European insurance company set the headquarter in Fukuoka City. We already have a very strong foundations. We have very strong roadmap to be Asia-focused global finance city, to collaborate and work closely with Asian cities. We have enough science to grow. We have enough people to grow. So we really appreciate your strong attention to the Fukuoka City key development next many years from here. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Oka, for that um, overview of um, a city which I suspect um, people in the UK are not very familiar with at the moment, but uh, that's really part of the reason we're doing this session, uh, to start to open up awareness. Um, <clears throat> we're going to have a discussion between us as, panel, uh, as a panel, um, and really I think the first question I want to focus on is where does Fukuoka sit in terms of Japan? Uh, we can talk about you know, Asia as well in a minute, but um, you know, people will know about Tokyo. We've um, been tracking Osaka for some time. Um, where does Fukuoka sit in the, um, the totality of J Japan? Maybe Oka first, you could like to give us an answer. Yeah, so uh, from the history of Japan, um, you know, Kyushu, Fukuoka city is basically based in Kyushu region. Kyushu regions used to be major import-export half of Japan. That's a history of Japan. So because look at the geography of Japan, Kyushu is based in the western part of Japan. Uh, as I said, look at that small map, which I put in the presentations. It's very close to China, very close to Korea. It's very close to um, you know, um, other Asian regions. That's why Fukuoka City is, is city dynamics is always with Asian economic dynamics past many years. And Tokyo, Osaka is very facing uh, Pacific Ocean side. By design, therefore, they are exposed with the United States and Australia is is quite quite significant so location wise uh, fukuoka city is one of only major city sits in japan seaside japan coast side southern sea coast side and compared to other major city which is based on a pacific Ocean side thank you and um Alison, from state street's point of view where does um fukuoka sit in terms of your uh, activities in japan and that part of asia that's a, that, that's a great question, differentiating between the two. So for State Street, our headquarters is in Tokyo. So when I think about where Fukuoka is located, my answer to you would be about two hours away by airplane. One of the things I appreciate about being located in Fukuoka is that our office is only 10 or 15 minutes from Fukuoka airport. And so I can easily get up to Tokyo if I need to. It is the busiest air route in Japan between Tokyo and Fukuoka. In fact, there are more airplanes back and forth every day than there are buses from where I live to the office. And then when we consider where uh, State Street is compared to the rest of APAC, again, as Oka said, we're just a few minutes, well, Few minutes, a few hours from um, from Hong Kong, or um, or we have a, a big operation center in Hangzhou, China. It's only two hours by airplane there, uh, so it's very conveniently located for our business. Thank you very much. Um, and I just I guess the question is, you know, why do you think and um, financial institutions are starting to 
move towards Pipioka as a base? Um, you know, what are the, you know, who, who's, who's been coming in uh, to the ecosystem in Pipioka and why do you think that that, that growth has been happening? Um, I'll go maybe first, yeah. Thank you very much. It's a great question again. Um, I think a couple of questions. Number one, as I said, um, Japan is, is, is facing a really uh, dem demographic challenge across major cities, but Fukuoka City is a complete opposite. Uh, lots of young students um, and 7,000 uh, science uh, students. Uh, it's quite important for uh, financial institutions to hire a capable student to grow the business. And uh, Fukuoka can offer lots of good talent uh, to many financial institutions at this moment. That's why it's a very talent, uh, talent pool perspective. It's a quite attractive city, number one. Number two is key differentiations uh, to run traditional uh, financial sector. Tokyo can be good enough. Uh, Osaka can be good enough. But now Japan needs to absorb more fintech industry and more fintech industries emerging in the Asia Pacific. Um, and, 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 and as Harrison mentioned, uh, geographically, it's very convenient place to open the place, as second offices, a third offices across the APAC, very close access to headquarters and APAC. And FinTech can have lots of synergy across many regions compared to traditional um, institution means. They don't necessarily, they don't need to be necessarily based in uh, Tokyo, Osaka. As far as vocation is competent enough and people attractive enough to run the operations. I think that's why more financial institutions, especially FinTech, starts thinking to come to Fukuoka City to be based and create collaboration with APAC side of the headquarters. Thank you very much. And Alison, um, obviously State Street has uh, got your presence in Fukuoka, but what other kind of companies are you seeing um, coming into the environment? Who, who are your uh, both competitors and your partners? Yeah, so let me um, let, let me share, um, to talk, before I answer that about the competitors, let me share a little bit about why State Street chose Fukuoka. So we've been here for 11 years, and 11 years ago, um, after the, the big earthquake in Tohoku, we chose Fukuoka for, um, for our backup purposes, to have an office that was far away from Tokyo, um, it's seismically separate. Also, it's on a totally different electric grid. So there's there's realistically nothing that could impact both our Tokyo and Fukuoka office. So in the beginning, that was just it. Just let's have it be a backup office. And we started with maybe a dozen employees and then grew to 30 or 50. And that's enough for backup purposes. However, what we found and this is uh, to what um, Oka was saying, is the access to talent here is outstanding. And so we just kept growing and growing. So 12, 30, 50, 100, 150, we're now over 200 employees. And it, so it's not, that's way more than you need for just a backup, we're here for the talent. So when I talk to our competitors, I find that many of them are along the same curve as we are. They think, oh, you know, I'll, I'll start a small office for backup purposes. You know, I'll put, um, I'll put some salespeople there or some uh, relationship managers. And the same thing, they're finding that, that they can get access to really good talent. Um, I'd also like to highlight what Oka was saying about the students. That has turned out to be a real differentiator for us because we have clients from around Asia Pacific, we need access to lots of different types of people. And Fukuoka is very popular, or I should say Kyushu, is very popular among foreign students. And they come here, they study, they love Kyushu, they want to stay. And so that's a great source of talent for us. Thank you very much. And just um, maybe, okay, you can have give us some examples of uh, com of companies that have decided to open branches um, in Fukuoka. I think um, MCP Holdings of Hong Kong, I think, has come and has a presence now. But what are the other oh, key? Yes. Uh, what's the other key companies that have a presence uh, in the financial? Yes, indeed. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yep. Thank you. So uh, as I said, Fukuoka Cities has very strong regional banks. Um, as a result, history of a money circulation is basically debt-based, lending-based. 
Uh, but we have a new startups. We have we need to emerge new industries. That's why we need to have a more fund capacity uh, to grow these regions. Uh, so look at uh, fund capacities, uh, less competitions compared to Tokyo, Osaka. Uh, lots of uh, attractive company, especially you know clean tech, uh, food tech, agri tech. There are some foundation of a investable uh, startups and investable uh, small medium sized company. That's quite attractive for you know asset managers who are thinking to you know find out um, you know attractive investment target. Uh, as a result, uh, MCP uh, decided to come to not to Japan, Tokyo. Uh, decided to come to Fukuoka City to you know create uh, more fund management capacity. That's one thing. As I said, at, at the same time, Fukuoka City is also serving as a factor capital city of Kyushu. And look at the Kumamoto, Kumamoto City and the Kumamoto prefectures. Um, they have a huge semiconductor-based industry. Uh, TDMCMC decided to put second factory uh, in, in uh, Kumamoto prefectures. Um, so we need to create more, you know, uh, you know, fund solutions or money circulation system um, go to support this semiconductor industry in Kyushu. Uh, as a result, uh, Taiwanese banks uh, decided to come uh, to Fukuoka City to open a branch uh, to grow to support this, uh, you know, very important uh, semiconductor sector growth in in coming coming years. So, uh, lots of reasons, uh, but uh, we have a um, risk competitions, attractive investment target, but a new industry and important industry is really emerging semiconductor industry in the Kyushu. So. Fukuoka city need to serve uh, demand of those growths in the region. Thank you very much. And just looking ahead, I mean, the potential of Fukuoka, um, you know, obviously it has its its, its strengths at the moment. Um, <clears throat> but where do you think the attractiveness of Fukuoka leads you in terms of looking at the future potential uh, for growth of the financial markets in Fukuoka? Um, you know, what are the things which makes Fukuoka the place to look for in the future? What are the things that are coming up? Uh, Alison, maybe you could start on that one. Sure. Well, we are continuing to grow um, our business here. The, um, as I mentioned, we have um, a big operations hub in China. We also have one in Bangalore and in Poland. And we want to diversify against those, those big hubs by having some smaller operating hubs around the world so that we're, you know, we're more diversified. So we will continue to grow um, our, our employee base here in Fukuoka so that we can support not only uh, APAC clients, but potentially global clients who are looking for access to Japan quality in the Asia time zone. The, um, we, um, we will also be, um, we'll also be looking not just to expand the types of clients that we cover from here, but providing more services to them. And I'd also note that, um, that Taiwan clients really like, um, like Japan, they like Kyushu, it's not just the TMSC factory. And so we have, um, we have Taiwan, it's, it's a pitch, it's a benefit to when State Street pitches to Taiwanese clients to say, well, if you, you know, if you let, if we win your business, you'll be supported out of our Fukuoka office. They like that a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, okay, you mentioned sort of the cost of living being less in Fukuoka than it is in Tokyo. Um, is that a, is that a factor? Do you think? Yeah, uh, cost of living is is yes one part, but more importantly, um, look at the Fukuoka city, its demography locations and and strong willingness to work with APAC. If I look back so-called lost 30 years in Japan, look at diversity of economic model across major cities, my understanding is that Tokyo model is a model to grow the city economies. Other cities is really followed Tokyo model. Though they have very specific Difference as a location, difference as a prefecture, difference as regions. Like West Coast, East Coast in the US economy. We believe that Fukuoka has enough potential to differentiate economic growth model as a city, as a region, compared 
to Tokyo and Osaka. It's very natural to believe that given the size of economy, given the size of population in Japan still, one city is very different from economic growth model from Tokyo and this city growth models highly linked with Asian growth model. This is a way for Fuku city to grow and DNA of Kyushu people, Fuku people is very international, it's a DNA. Japan has always tendency to close the border, unfortunately. And Fukuoka people, Kyushu people has opposite mentality. We always open, open-minded to APAC, open-minded to global. We always welcome to global. We always welcome more students from overseas. This open-minded mentality, international mindset, and locations, and strong ambitions, that's very important for us to differentiate growth model between Tokyo, Osaka, and Fukuoka. So that's kind of key for us to grow. And that's key for us to be recognized from global investors and global entrepreneurs as financial city, one of key financial, key financial center in Japan going forward. I can see Alison nodding, yeah. <laughs> and maybe I could jump, you, you've heard a very professional um, answer to that, but maybe I can jump in with a personal response to that. I've lived and worked in New York, Tokyo, Hong Kong, and now Fukuoka, and um, it's um, uh, it's not, yes, Fukuoka has a more moderate cost of living than some other cities, but the quality of life is one of the things that I think differentiates itself. Fukuoka is a very um, compact city, It's um, um, and it's um, that the streets are very easy to navigate, it's relatively flat. So for my job, I cover both Tokyo and Fukuoka. I live here. I spend one week a month in Tokyo and three weeks in Fukuoka. My commute in Fukuoka is lovely. If the weather's nice, I bicycle to the office. If not, I hop on a bus and come to the office. And in both cases, I'm here within 30 minutes. When I work out of our Tokyo office, it's, I'm on a subway, it's crowded, it takes me almost an hour, it, everything is far away from each other, it's a hustle and bustle. So I think another differentiator of Fuoka, not just the cost of living, and not just the fact that for my company, real estate is much more reasonable here in Fuoka, it's just a nice place to live. Uh, thank you. And and uh, thinking about you as a you know uh, someone from overseas coming to um, Japan, um, how 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 welcoming is it is Fukuoka to people um, from all parts of the globe? We must have uh, people obviously coming from other parts of Asia, but also from Europe and the Americas. We have employees here from twenty five different countries. Um, that's. Um, one, what, one of the things that happens um, when you hire the exchange students is um, a, a wide, um, a, a large demographic of employees, and they all like working here. I personally have um, felt very welcomed living here. The, um, in fact, the Fukuoka has such a good reputation within State Street we have intercompany transfers. People hear from a colleague how nice it is, and they say, oh, if there's ever a job there, please keep me in mind. <laughs> it's always nice to be popular amongst your, your colleagues, yes. Um, we're gonna move into uh, uh, some questions from the audience now. Mm. Um, and just, just keep carrying on really, but I'm gonna ask Oka to expand on, because the question is, what are your personal favorite things about living in Fukuoka? Uh, what's the daily life like compared with Tokyo? And I think we've heard a bit of that from Alison in terms of the commute and uh, the ease of getting around and just the, the gentleness. But um, Oka, what's your experience of living in Tokyo? Yeah, I think a uh, couple of things. I, as I, I briefly explained, I live in London uh, for seven years. I live in New York, um, Hong Kong, Tokyo, Hong Kong seven years as well, and came back um, to Tokyo. But initially, I you know, basically spent more time in Fukuoka City right now uh, the reason is very simple. I feel the momentum. I feel the dynamics of the city mm -hmm. and, and young populations and people so nice, so kind and very positive mindset. 
I never say that Tokyo is depressed, but uh, compared uh, to other major cities, Fukuoka is very much good looking. Uh, people, I feel the happiness of the people, as Arizona mentions today, same as investment. Now, social returns in really important, also economic returns. Our life is the same. Of course, wealthy people, you know, making the wealth is important, but at the same time, having a very high quality of life is very important. If I spend time in the Fukuoka city, I recommend everyone to spend time in the Fukuoka city going forward. People can feel that same feeling we have. And, and people can feel very bright future of the city. And we are hoping this very high expectation of the cities is spread across Japan um, to regain the momentum of Japan going forward. But, you know, I, I like this city momentum. Uh, by the way, um, food is food is amazingly, amazingly great in the city, by the way. And uh, as Arison mentioned, really the personal touch on this one, but uh, we had a uh, global offsight of my previous bank, BNP Paribas, a gold global management came to Koga City. Everyone asked, why Oka? Why not Tokyo? Why not Osaka? Why not uh, other cities? Why Fukuoka? And second day, all the top management of the bank appreciated my choice, <laughs> like that. So it's a, it's a magic city. Welcome to entertain the people. Um, so I was pretty much entertained by Fukuoka City right now. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, 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 and if I could, Allison, sorry, yes, go on. Yeah, if I could just add a little bit to that there, um, a differentiation that I see with Tokyo is, and this is a generalization, but a lot of times when we want to do something new, in Tokyo, the first answer is um, is no, or oh, that's going to be difficult. In Fukuoka, the first answer is um, okay, let's give it a go, or let's see how we can make it work. There's something about um, Fukuoka people or Kyushu people that are very open to innovation. It's it's very entrepreneurial here, and people would like to help get to a, a solution for a client or business problem. Makes perfect, perfect sense. Um, Alison, you mentioned that one of the initial uh, reasons why State Street came to Fukuoka was about sort of risk mitigation um, and trying to show you had a, a separation. Um, but but what, why Fukuoka rather to another another city in Japan or another city in Asia? Well, um, it wouldn't be possible to be another city in Asia because a lot of our systems have to be, you know, the access to the Bank of Japan or other money transfer systems have to be within Japan. Mm -hmm. So senior management at the time, they started in Sapporo, they went to Osaka, Kobe, Fukuoka, Okinawa, and, um, and saw something good in each of those places. But Fukuoka was the only one that ticked all of the boxes, sufficient separation from Tokyo, access to talent, access to transportation, um, and, and I suspect, I wasn't here at the time, but I suspect that the good food in Fukuoka had something to do with their decision. <laughs> There's something about uh, cities that are on the coast um, and the seafood you get as a result that, uh, that does make a difference, I think. Okay, um, just, just to exp expand a bit further, um, how has Fukuoka been creating financial capacity from institutions outside Japan? Um, you talked about sort of building financial capacity, but how how is that happening? Yeah, so um, we started having thanks to uh, State Street, um, thanks to, uh, you know, Mu, you know, overseas uh, company open up a branches. Obviously, once they open up a branches, they send the top management uh, or, you know, headquarter management to the city. And top management uh, start having more time to look at the city. Um, they start seeing lots of startups. Um, they realized that, wow, Fukuoka City has a strong foundation to grow as a finance city. That's number one. Number two, um, one of two of key uh, climate uh, tech company, at the same time, one of a clean energy company based in the Fukuoka City, they had uh, an investment uh, from a Canada, uh, Canada pension, uh, first time uh, as clean uh, energy company. Uh, once that reading National pensions started investing in the Fukuoka City. They have opportunity to come to Fukuoka City to make further due diligence of the company and, and look around other companies in the Fukuoka City and the Kyushu areas. 
And then financial industries, as you know, is very well connected. Uh, once they start having some reputation of a curiosity about uh, real investment cases, um, they start hearing lots of a uh, good reputations, investment opportunity, uh, work at Fukuoka cities. In, in fact, um, we had a one fund and CEO of Singapore-based educational fund chief come to Fukuoka city, look at um, potential investment opportunity last month. Uh, he heard the reputation from other fund manager in Singapore, for example. Um, and, and also we started having a more traction from global leading accelerator program provider based in Hong Kong. Uh, they've been growing startup in Hong Kong. They've been growing startup in India, uh, Southeast Asia, but they've been missing a piece of puzzle in the startup uh, portfolio, which is Japan. And now they spend enough time in Tokyo, Osaka, a little bit uh, Sapporo city. And now he came to Kobe city and he realized that from very neutral view perspective, welcome to accelerator program, given the pool of the talent, given the level of ambition of the talent, he now thinking to set global accelerator program based on the Fukuoka city, for example. So we already have a good reputations. Um, as you know, financial people very well connected. Um, so once big investors, big pensions, one or two asset managers, one or two reading overseas banks start to open up a branch of the office in Fukuoka city, they're sharing lots of positive noise from Fukuoka city's last two years. And then momentum is a buildings and more and more um, potential uh, open office opening, uh, branch opening and operational opening coming uh, one or two years. We have a strong pipeline in year 2024 as well. Thank you very much. I think that addresses what one of the questions we've had in, which is about how Fukuoka City can promote itself as an attractive place for foreign investors. Um, but I just wondered whether, Alison, you can think about, you know, what would you say other cities might be able to learn from a Fukuoka's um, model of growth? Um, are there sort of things that you see happening in Fukuoka, which you think actually that could be a model for somewhere else in, in the world to, to, to look at? Yeah, well, I, I don't think that, um, I think what um, Fukuoka is doing is not rocket science. It's you lean into your demographics, you lean into your people, you lean into uh, students. And so um, maybe the learning is make your city a livable city, um, have good transportation hubs, um, support your universities so that um, young people come, um, have a you know have a dynamic, fun city center so the the students then want to stay here. So um, I, again, I don't think it's rocket science, but I think anyone can can learn from it. Lean into your people, lean into your demographics, make your city livable. I think that's a perfect answer and something I think I would you know, offer as advice to any other financial center who is asking me how to how to um, you know, make progress. Um, a final question, I think, before we run out of time, but Oka, um, the question is whether you've got any examples of innovation or collaboration between a local company and a non-Japanese partner that you would like to highlight. Yeah, so thank you. Um, we have a uh, lot of SMEs. Uh, in Japan, for example, uh, clean technology, agri-tech technologies. Uh, there's a reason in, in 1960 to 70s, Kyushu is, is the most obvious area to suffer from, you know, you know, pollutions and everything. But look at Kyushu today, look at Fukuoka today, it's one of the cleanest regions. There is a technology behind. Uh, but those companies, given the size, cannot expand into APAC. They are looking for uh, local partners, export their IP, intellectual property, to run the operations in Asia Pacific region, for example. Uh, opposite side of it is that APAC based startup still look at good enough size, big enough size to expand as, as a country. Of course, they are very pro uh, growth. They've been looking at the China, they've been looking at the India. But Japan is still one of the choice for them to come to run the operations as a startup. And, and we also welcome to those startups come to Japan. That's why you know, Fukuoka City is really de de deregulating uh, visa application and everything. We have enough talent. 
And then we try to exchange the business more and more. And if we are missing something like a FinTech, we are very happy to welcome more FinTech company based in Fukuoka City to collaborate with two big banks in Fukuoka City. Basically, they can potentially outsource the R&D process of Asian startups and vice versa. So we are really um, thinking the mix of the corporate across APAC and, and Fukuoka City to capture new dynamic growth potential. And if people are open-minded and look at the Japan as a, as, a, as, a, as a total, Japan is roughly speaking four trillion US dollar worth retained earnings by Japanese corporate. They have ability to spend, they have ability to invest, and they're looking for the growth in APAC. Yeah, yeah. Fukuoka City is not geographically, but financially can get cheaper for other major city of Japan to Asia. That's kind of, you know, our growth model. And also that's already happening in Fukuoka City. Thank you very much. I'm afraid time has beaten us. So we could have carried on this conversation, I think, for uh, a lot longer. But uh, uh, first of all, a few thank yous. Uh, thank you very much uh, to our sponsors again uh, for allowing us to run this webinar series. It's uh, you know, we're, we're really, really grateful for your support. Um, we have a few events coming up for those of you who are interested. Um, on <clears throat> on Thursday, the State of Play with Fusion, um, which is uh, going to be a fascinating session, I think. Uh, on Monday, another uh, program in our Financial Centers of the World program with a focus on Bermuda, um, and then a session on Tuesday on ending the destruction of our undersea cultural heritage. Um, and it just really remains for me to um, give first, first of all one comment. And one of the things I say when I talk to financial centers across the world, you can't be an international financial center without international people. Um, and I think you've demonstrated today Fukuoka is a place where uh, people are welcome um, from other parts of the world uh, to come and live and work. Um, so just leave you with that thought. And my thanks to um, Oka uh, and to Alison for your um, inspirational presentation and uh, discussion today. Um, I've enjoyed it very much. Thank you to the audience for coming. Uh, normally, if we were in a big open space, I'd off offer you a huge round of applause, uh, but you'll have to make do with um, a very quiet one from me. Uh, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, indeed. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Reed. <laughs>